Today I'm going to show you how I took a regular 2x4 Douglas fir and I turned it into this arbor behind me. It's a good one. I use a technique that you guys might be familiar with. It was new to me when I started it, but Shishugi Ban is something that you guys are, I think you're really going to like this one. So before we get started, do me a favor, smash that like button down below, hit the subscribe button, and then tap that notification bell so that you guys could be alerted every time that I put a video out. So without further ado, let's get into it. Before we get into the build, let's talk about Shishugiban, which is also known as Yagashugi, an ancient Japanese exterior siding technique that preserves wood by charring it with fire. And typically this is done to Japanese red cedar, but in recent times, we've seen this performed on all different species of wood. The traditional process involves charring the wood, cooling it, cleaning it, and finally finishing it with a natural oil. In our case, I'll be finishing it with an exterior water-based varnish or top coat. Using this process yields a resistance to fire, rot, insects, and it can last up to 80 years. And I was largely inspired by videos I watched by Inspire Woodcraft and Build That Build. And I'll throw cards up top and links in the description to both of them. Now let's get back to the build. And as always, the first thing to do is to start breaking down the rough lumber and cutting it to size. However you need to do this to make repeatable cuts, that's how you gotta do it. And I find it a good habit to check off your completed cuts as you go. I unfortunately don't have a dedicated miter saw station, so it takes me a little longer to make sure my cuts are as accurate as possible and as you might tell my saw can probably use an upgrade here or at the very least maybe a new blade struggle bus after cutting everything in size I make my trestles and I did this by splitting two by fours on my table saw I used my works Pegasus bench as my outfeed table this thing is super versatile with this integrated clamping system and the dogs and I really like it. Now let's talk detail. I made a template out of some scrap plywood to trace onto the ends of my beams and again using my works table to keep it steady. Have I said that I really love this thing? Using my jigsaw, I followed the line as closely as possible, but I did forget to turn off the slow start feature on my jigsaw. This caused the blade to bind pretty bad. And safety tip here, Always remove the battery or unplug the tool before trying to right the wrong. Just trust me on this one. Working a lot better now. Now that we have our detail, I figured this beam could use a little bit of a softer edge. So I went with the small round over here and I think it came out nicely. Next, we move to my assembly table uh, where I'm marking off both legs in preparation for the trellises. To make things even easier, I cut a pair of spacer blocks to be sure I was on the same width on both ends of my trellis. I used glue and exterior screws on each trellis to make sure that everything was going to be secure and outdoor ready.
After the first trellises were down, I fell into a rhythm. And before you knew it, both legs were complete. I brought all pieces outside to begin dry fitting, and for some reason, I thought shimming it and standing the legs up against the ladders would help me align for my holes on the beams. That couldn't be further from the truth. Really, it was just a lot of work that wasn't going to give me the results I wanted. Next, I thought if I performed this on the grass, it was going to yield me different results. and. Again, you guys can see the trend here. After about 30 minutes of repositioning, I finally figured it out. I made a huge mistake. I thought I caught it on camera, but I guess I didn't. I built the legs based on the outside width of the beams, not the inside. All of this was for naught. Here I brought the legs back inside and I'm determined to make lemonade by performing this really unsafe cut on my table saw because I was in denial. Here's one of the slivers I cut. It looks cool. I set up the legs and as I'm looking at it, guys, it looked terrible. Well, let's try this again. This time I was smart enough to build my legs inside the beams. So I was sure it would fit. And from this point on, it was just like the first go around. And I won't bore you with that again. But the moral of the story here is mistakes happen. We just have to regroup and reboot. Now that we're back on track, we're in my driveway, putting my new Flame King propane torch to good use. This thing is sick. With 50,000 BTUs, it made light work of burning wood. Just listen to it. After burning and cooling the wood, it's on to the cleaning process. Many sources recommend a wire bristle brush. So that's actually what I used. All right, so two things I learned. One, this is super labor intensive. Don't do it with the hand torch if you're doing a big project. Get one of these flamethrowers like I use here. Work great. And two, Ditch the wire brush. It takes forever and it doesn't get in the grooves. Get you one of these scrubbies. Gets in all the crevices really easily and it's not too abrasive on the wood where it's marring it. So those are my two tips so far. Looking good so far. Once I get done scrubbing all of these, it'd be on to finish. So we'll see how it turns out. So after getting a little bit of the dust off that I brushed off. I use a little denatured alcohol here to clean the wood in preparation for finish. It's starting to take off. It's a good idea to let the wood dry for at least an hour after wiping it down. And finally, I threw two coats of General Finishes Water Base Exterior 450 Top Coat and flat.
Hey, so it's a wrap for this one, guys. We made it. I think it came out awesome. To be honest with you, the Shishugimon technique is something that I've been looking at for a while and I was a little too nervous to get into. I'm so glad that we tried it out. Uh, the deep tones that we got from the Shishugimon and that general finish with that flat 450 exterior, I don't think I could have been any happier with any other finish, to be honest with you. Um, this project was challenging, but we learned something. I think I want to do some more uh, Shishugimon in the future. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this project. Tell me if you like it. Tell me if you don't like it. Tell me if there's other projects that you think that would look cool in Shishugimon that you want me to try out. I'm open for all suggestions. Uh, honestly, smash that like button. This is Ready, Set, Build It, guys. I'll let you take one more look at this before we get out of here.